What is channeling? Okay, sometimes you have these kind of people who call themselves spiritual, yeah? And then they say, you know, I've once come across a book that somebody wrote and he said, well, I've been channeling Archangel Gabriel or something. And then I read that book, just a bit of it, and then I came across that passage. And, you know, whatever angels are, it's generally people who want to believe that there's something good outside of them. They just look at, you know, oh, that's angels, and angels are really good and wise. But then you realize that what he was supposed to be channeling was kind of judging humans for having sex, because he said that humans that have sex, you know, it's kind of disgusting, and that when angels have sex, it's so much better. So you realize, well, what was he really channeling? You know, because in truth, he just made himself feel better, because he wanted to write a book, probably. And so he wrote a book, but he was probably feeling mediocre about himself. So instead of just writing a book about his opinions on life, he claimed that he was channeling Archangel Gabriel or something. So he was pushing responsibility for his actions onto some kind of higher being. And in that way, he could feel special about who he was. But the truth is, he was just writing down what he thought about life. So, there is no channeling is what I believe from like higher beings and stuff. Because in the end, you cannot channel something that is entirely something else. So when you receive some kind of insights, some kind of wisdom, some kind of knowledge, it has to pass through you. Because yeah, you can say I'm the channel, you know, but what am I channeling? Because the stuff that I talk about where does it come from, right? I didn't really do the things that people say you're supposed to do to become whatever enlightened means. I just live my life. But suddenly I realized that I had a lot of potential for looking at the current state of affairs and then figuring out how to solve riddles and how to solve problems and then provide people with solutions. Which is, yeah, okay, I'm looking at the world and I've studied environmental protection and people say that, you know, the climate is changing and we're killing too many animals. Well, then stop being so lazy and do something with your life that gives meaning to you instead of just earning money for other people. So channeling, to me, is looking at the way things are. And so you could say that what I'm doing is channeling. Because I fill myself with content, with ideas and with insights by looking at the world and by reflecting on what I see and by understanding it. But also by feeling myself into these topics to know how I feel about it. So when I draw an image, you could say I'm channeling my emotions the way I feel and sometimes even the way other people felt. I'm channeling that into an image. And that's then truth because that image expresses what I felt and that's channeling. So I realized when I was writing the book of fear, you know, you see, that's where it's like kind of complicated because I walked around and I started asking the question, what do I want to do in life? And I was going, you know, out of my way of who I used to be so that I could find an answer to that question because I wanted to find some kind of meaning. And then an answer came literally like that with in the form of words write a book about fear. And then I thought, what does that mean? Like, I'm supposed to write a book about fear, but I know nothing about fear. 
So I filled myself with experiences that would allow me to look at fear from another perspective because I never looked at fear really. I never did that until I got this job, you could say. But where did the job come from? You see that, I don't know. You know, I got a kind of a mission, write a book about fear. And apparently, you know, I met up to the challenge. Uh, I proved that I can be courageous to myself. But where this, you know, write a book about fear, because where did that come from? Could you say now, oh, I'm just really smart. I figured it out myself. But I don't think so, because I think that there are beings that can communicate with us. But they also realize that, you know, it's not their place, because they're not like physical beings in that sense. So they can give you ideas, you know, it's like an entity that wants you to smoke for whatever reason. And so you smoke. Because maybe that smoking tobacco attracts dark spirits. And so you have to ask yourself, what are you channeling? What kind of thoughts are you harboring inside your mind and where do they come from? Because if you smoke tobacco, you open yourself up to all kinds of things that you don't know even exist. Because you're unconscious of these things. So if you walk around and you get angry at all kinds of stuff, that's just angry spirits living in you. And you can get them out of you. And that's why looking at the world just as, you know, that's all material, makes you vulnerable to manipulation from forces that are more of energetic nature or spirit nature. Because you are spirit in that sense, although you have a body. So... What I did with that fear question was I kept making experiences that scared me. So I was afraid of dogs, so I started spending more time with dogs. And then I realized that I was seeing dogs as some kind of vicious creature with sharp teeth and like really like, you know, my ideas on dogs were really bad. But by challenging myself and opening up more to dogs, I realized that dogs are really kind beings when you can open up to them and they're very gentle in nature because they're also social beings and so i made all these mix experiences with fear also went slacklining and then sometimes i would feel incredible fear to walk over the slack line um, or when i would sometimes go at night into the forest and sit there i would feel incredible fear but i looked at the fear so I filled myself with information and insights and experiences and then I wrote the book. And that's why the book of fear is full of my insights. And you could say it sounds a bit insane because no ordinary person could channel that much information into one book. Because the whole book is brimming with truth, which is your diet can change your mindset. So depending on how you eat, you can actually be more afraid or more angry or more loving or more balanced, depending on the kind of diet you need. See, so channeling is something that comes from the stuff you fill yourself with. And if you fill yourself with thoughts of, oh, you know, Archangel Gabriel is talking to me, then you feel like, oh, you know, you can be proud. But you know what pride is? Pride is a very low frequency emotion that you hold on to to make yourself feel better than other people because then you can think, I've channeled Archangel Gabriel. No, <laughs> you just channeled your own opinions and your own disgust of humans into a book and you claim to be somewhat holy while in inside you are harboring all kinds of feelings like disgust and hatred that you never looked at so to me the only thing you should channel in that sense is truth so you look at how you feel 
because that's the only thing that you can really be honest about. And then you speak about that instead of speaking about how other people feel or what other people think. And right, and then you can channel your own emotions into a creative outlet. 